Let me tell you what we are not going to be doing today. We will not sketch the portrait, nor will we outline the portrait. What we are going to do is use shapes to build the portrait from beginning to the end. This is the kind of tutorial that you see on the internet that you can't understand how the steps are broken down. And today, I'm going to break it down all for you. If you are just starting out in this technique, you can still have your sketch showing in low opacity and multiply mode like this. But if you're confident enough, you can start with zero sketch and this way you can even apply this technique when you're painting with acrylics or oils on canvas because this is how I paint on canvas. So this technique saves a lot of time because the shape of the brush stroke, the value of the brush stroke and the color is correct for every single brush stroke right from beginning to the end. So this saves you a lot of time, it's very efficient because you make less mistake and this is also known as the a la prima technique. Getting every shape and value correct requires observational skills, but getting every color correct requires you to have your own palette. Let's pick a red for our palette first. Red is a very important color for any portrait painting, so we need a vibrant red for this and let's drop it into the primary color slot. I intend for my skin tone to be made of blue, so I'm going to pick a blue color, but this is not a very important color, so I'm going to pick a very pale blue. Because I want the portrait to be very warm, we are also going to pick an orange. So the orange is going to be very vibrant. And lastly, because I want to have an accent color, I'm going to pick pink for my accent color. This is also going to be very vibrant. So we have a total of four colors. This is a tetradic color scheme. And now we're going to pick our black. I'm going to pick it for my red. So I'm just going to pick the red and drag it down to get it black for my neutral tones here. And for my white, I'm going to pick it from the blue. Once we have all the colors and also the black and white, we can start mixing our tints. So I'm going to mix the tints for my grayscale first and blend the two black and whites together. Now that we have our grayscale, we're going to look at the two empty slots which is the green and also the yellow. So there's no way we can mix a yellow or a green here but I'm going to try anyway with blue and orange and see what I can get. So I think that this mix is not green or yellow and I don't think that we can use yellow or green at all in our painting and that's fine. So next we're going to create our skin tone. Our skin tone is going to be grey plus blue. So it's going to be a very very pale blue for the base skin tone. For the reds and the oranges of the skin tone, I'm going to pick the pure orange and pure red because I want the painting to be very vibrant. In order to have a working palette when we paint our portrait, we need to expand the palette first. We already have our grayscale from just now, so I'm painting down three strips of the orange, the red and the base skin tone. Then we can pick the colors from the grayscale above to create the tints here, like what I'm doing. So repeat this step for every single value and we will have a working palette at the end of the day. After that, it's up to you if you want to expand your palette and create even more graduations in between the tints that you already have. I'm also adding in pinks here in between so that I can have more colors to choose from since pink is my accent color. And I'm also mixing in between the red and the orange as well. I've also decided in the beginning that my eyes are going to be blue. So I'm taking blue and mixing it with a pale orange to get the tints in between. Then for the darker shade of the blue, I'm using the black that I've chosen to make the tints here. I feel like the swatches here is already sufficient enough for me to complete my painting. So I'm cleaning up the palette and I'm also going to test it on the portrait that I have here. I'm just going to drop in my base skin tone here and then the pink for my lips because this is the pink that I want to use. And then I'm going to also drop in the blues for the eyes and also a brown for the hair. If you'd like to learn more about how I create my palettes, you can always watch my color theory series. So basically having this test portrait here is great because later I can refer to how the lighting would be like when I create my final portrait. For the skin shading, I'm immediately dropping in orange and testing out various tints of reds and pinks to see how it would look like and what I want to achieve in my final painting. So when I'm painting my portrait later, I can also pick colors from this test portrait itself immediately to drop into my portrait. Now everything is ready, I just need to share this as a JPEG and then I'm going to load this into my reference. Once you have your palette ready, it's time to paint. 
Okay, so let's create a new layer. I'm going to make this in multiply mode and then I'm going to use the watercolor um, texture background for the paper and paint a black color all over my canvas just to have a canvas background here first. Then I'm going to create a new layer below and you can paint a flat background here or paint some brush strokes. I am going to paint some brush strokes here using the natural sketch brush. By the way, I'm releasing my new portrait brush pack next week. This is a video where I'm testing the brushes from this brush pack and it's kind of like a teaser. So if everything goes well, I will release the brush pack next week. This brush is very effective for sketching and painting and if you see here, the more I paint over and over again, the brush strokes just seem to disappear here. So I will be mainly using just this brush for the entire painting. In this technique, you must paint from dark to light and you must change your brush size every time you lay your new brush stroke down because every brush stroke needs to be a specific size and you only need to lay it down once. So not like scribbling like that. Let me show you. We're going to first block in our first shape using a shadow color. So I'm using the third shade from the darkest color. So it's not too dark, but it's still considered a shadow color. Using this color and our brush, we are going to adjust the size of our brush each time and paint the shape of our shadow. I'm going to try and do this like one brush stroke for each shape so that it looks spontaneous and loose. So your goal in this step is to represent all the shadows in your portrait with just one shape. Because this technique requires a lot of experience and skill, so you can actually use this technique when you're painting with acrylics or oils as well. To check if you're on the right track, just make your portrait very very small and look at the reference itself. It should already look like a human. And when you're done with this step, you should be able to see that this is a girl and the emotion itself just from this one shape. So make this shape very very attractive because this is going to be your biggest mess here for your shadows and value and this will determine how good your painting will look later on. The color that you should be using for this step should be from the red category and the dark tones but not the darkest yet. So now you have one shape. This one shape is the essence of your portrait and your painting. So this shape should immediately show you the gesture of the painting which means you can tell it's a portrait. It's a girl or it's a guy. It has two eyes, one nose and a mouth and what kind of expression the person is making in your portrait. You should be able to tell from this shape alone. So now you can block in the mid-tones. So for the base skin tone, we're just going to pick the base skin tone color right here from my palette which is the grey blue and I'm going to create a new layer underneath the shadow layer and I'm just going to block in the entire skin tone with this grey blue here. So for this step, the value that you choose is very important. I'm picking this value because this is the value of the skin tone from the reference. So if the skin tone of your photo reference is a bit darker or lighter, you should adjust your value accordingly. You should also use as big as a brush size as possible so that you don't have unsightly streaks across the portrait itself. So if you want to change the color of this skin tone, you can adjust this in the color palette creation in the beginning. So you can also use a gray green or gray red. So basically you just need to go very very gray for this step in order for your portrait to appear luminous at the end. What you need to do now is actually detail within the shadow areas which is the first dark shape that we have, the red shape. And then the beauty of this technique is that you can stop anytime and the painting would still look good because you're working from big to small. So work with big shapes first and then slowly detail within those big shapes to create little shapes. Let me explain a little bit about what we are going to do in this step. We are going to paint within the shadow shapes here which is the red area and we're going to fill in using the colors from this value section only because those are the shadow section. So for example, this triangle right here in the photo reference is going to be somewhere in this value here. So all we have to do is find out which color in this value that is correct and paint it in the exact same spot. 
Don't worry, I'll guide you along. So for now, just merge the layers into one for the base and the shadow shape and then we'll paint directly on this layer itself. For now, let's just do something simple. Lock the alpha for this layer and then we'll just replace the color of the hair. So the color of the hair is definitely not red, it's going to be brown. So I'm going to pick brown here and replace the entire hair. Nothing too fancy, I'm not changing the value a lot. I'm just replacing the color here. Now I'm going to unlock the alpha and continue replacing colors. I want my neck to be dark red, so I'm just putting in the dark red into my neck here and make it a bit stronger. We are also going to paint this dark area of the shadow here at the side of the face with the same dark red. So the formula of the lighting goes like this, very very red for all the shadow areas and going into orange in the terminator area which is the border where shadow meets light so I'm painting the orange in these borders here. I really want the nose to be very vibrant and pop so I'm picking the vibrant red right from the swatch and painting it in to the nostrils area. Now let's change the colors of the whites of the eye. So for the right eye, the corners are actually a lot darker. So I'm going to maintain this value but just change the color to be the grey. And for the other corner, I'm going to pick a lighter shade of grey and just put it in. Then for the other eye, using the same grey, I'm going to put it into the shadow corner. Then I'm going to pick the next lighter shade and drop it into the other corner. Now we're going to paint the iris blue, so I have my strip for the iris um, palette here already and I'm just going to use the black here to sketch in the blacks of the iris first. Because this black is a bit colder, when I use it for the shadow side, the colour doesn't really match. So I'm going to change the colour to be the black red here instead so that it matches the shadow side a bit more. After this is done, I can darken the shape with the black itself to make it even darker here. Now I'm going to pick the purest blue colour from my palette and just colour in the eyes for the light side. For the other side, I'm picking a shade darker to paint the blue colours for this eye. Using this same shade, I'm going to shade the other eye as well for the darker blue. Now I'm going to change to the dark brown and change the colour for the brows. If you use the same shade for the other side of the shadow area, you can see that it's a bit too light. So every time you switch back and forth painting the light and the shadow area, you have to drop the value so that it matches. And I can see here that the tip of the brow is slightly lighter, so I'm picking one shade lighter for the ends of the brow. For the cheek highlights, I think that it's between these two shades here. So I'm just going to mix it really quickly in a new layer and then drop this into the triangle shade. If you find that the colour that you paint is wrong, don't be afraid to test other shades. All the shades that you require is already in this palette. If you're not confident about this shade of colour, then just leave it be first because once we uh, paint more of the light area, then we will be able to identify more colours later. Just paint what you're confident with and here I'm picking a pale pink to replace the colour for the lips. And as I paint towards the shadow area, I drop to a darker shade of pink. I also use the same pink for the ears before gradually moving to the red for the shadows of the ears as well. Another easy target for us to achieve now is to paint the hair, so I'm picking the black and then just sketching the hair in. Remember to adjust your brush size as you go when you are doing this painting. And when you are sketching, remember that you are doing this with a one brush stroke approach which means everything that you put here will appear in the final, there is no mistakes. And you can stop anytime and this will also still look good. Using this same swatch, I am also blocking in the shadows for the lips. It's like a puzzle piece, the more colours you have on your canvas that are correct, the more easily you can identify other colours as well. So here I'm picking in a darker brown to block in the shadows for my nose section. The lower edges of the jaw in the shadow area will have a lot of reflected light, so I'm picking in a very vibrant dark pink here to put in here as the reflected light colour. Remember the swatch that we paint the shadow with? This swatch is this colour which is this red here. So we're just going to pick the orange version and replace the forehead and the chin colours here. So it's the same value, just different colour because a portrait is only red in the cheek section and the other sections are usually orange. Sooner or later, you'll find yourself painting closer and closer towards the light area and this is when you know that you're ready to move to painting the light area. 
once you get to the boundaries where dark mid light which is the terminator area and you find that you can't identify any more colors in your dark shape so it's time to move on to painting the lighter shape first then after that you can identify even more colors in the darker shapes we are first going to paint the ear so we're going to pick shades of pink to test first the ear is very very vibrant so testing a few shades of pink i realized that a neutral red suits it more once you got the value correct you can paint the ear with this color and then after that you can pick shades of pink in the same value so you're just changing the color but not the value and make some areas a bit more saturated depending on the parts of the ear since we are doing pinks we're going to pick a lighter shade of pink to fill in the blanks for the lips for the light area of the face I'm gonna straight pick the color from the test portrait itself and use this color to gradually shade the shadow areas then I'm gonna pick a lighter shade of skin color from the test portrait and use this to fill in all my mid-tones you can also pick colors from your swatches if you're confident enough but if you're not you can just pick it out from your test portrait for my nose, I want the colors to be very vibrant so I'm picking the colors from the palette here instead because the colors from the palette seems to be more vibrant. For the rest of the areas, you can just pick colors from the corresponding area. So here I'm painting the chin. So I pick the colors from the chin area from the test portrait and painting this accordingly. I'm painting the rest of the face this way, picking colors from the corresponding areas and then just slapping it down onto the portrait just to see how it looks first. Even though the color that I'm painting looks very similar here, actually they are different colors. So just remember to pick the colors from the corresponding section in your test portrait. Once you get to the highlight section, you can try and pick colors from your palette first and see if it works. If it doesn't, you can always just pick the colors from the test portrait. I also want some reflected color in the bottom of the jaw here. So I'm testing with orange but it looks too orange and doesn't gel with the entire portrait. So I'm picking red here but when I test red, it actually looks pink and I like the effect so remember that color is always relative it looks different depending on what color surrounds it the red here actually looks like it's pink so our goal is to be able to remove the sketch layer and still see a pretty portrait but now we are barely there yet so we have to add a lot more shapes into the portrait here I'm trying to make the eyelids a bit more vibrant but this color doesn't really work out I think orange would be better here because it looks a lot more natural this way I can also use the same orange to fill in the blanks for the ears. The teeth here is not grey nor is it blue or white. It is actually an orange grey colour. So I'm testing the colours here and it looks pretty okay. Then I'm using the black colour to drop in the shadows for the teeth. Now I need to add enough details to the portrait in order to turn off the sketch and to proceed to the next stage. So I'm mostly detailing in the wrinkle areas for the eyes for now. I use the same technique throughout the painting, picking colors and painting in the corresponding shapes in the look position and making sure that each shape is the correct value and color. Painting is not very different from sketching, so as long as you can sketch nicely, you will be able to paint nicely as well. And color is not a very accurate term. I think the term here is temperature, so the color temperature has to be correct throughout the painting. Now I'm going to remove the sketch layer and continue painting the portrait. The sketch layer was here so that you guys could see what I was painting. Usually if you paint without the sketch layer, it's easier because you can see every single shape clearly. So because I was painting with the sketch layer, all the shapes were all muddied up. So let me just quickly adjust the shapes by re-sketching some of them and making sure all the shapes are distinct first and then we can continue. During this stage, you can also use the smudge tool to clean up and push the shapes around to form the shape that you want since the colors and the values are all already here. You can also adjust some colors as you move along this stage since you have the view of the entire portrait now and it's easier for you to identify the colors at this point in time. Be careful when you're painting the terminator which is the boundary between light and dark. You have to get the color correct and the color here should be more vibrant. So you see here red doesn't really suit it and then if I try orange it's either too bright or too vibrant. So I feel that I need to go in between and now this is perfect. So when you paint your terminator make sure to really test it out and get the color that you want. Since the reflected light in the shadow area is pink, I'm painting the same pink on the edges here. Now I'm turning off the watercolor paper which is in multiply mode so that I can see my colors even clearer and then I can continue fixing the shapes that I have on my face first. 
You can also load the same brush into the smudge tool to push the shapes around. So you see here in this stage, I can actually pick the colours from the existing portrait itself to continue painting in the areas surrounding it. So just use this method and clean up all your shapes first, make sure the shapes are the same size as the reference and the same value. Then work on the terminator in the nose. The terminator in the nose is going to be very vibrant, so I'm using orange here for the terminator. And if you want to create a new colour, you can just pick the swatches and scribble on to the side, then pick the colours itself to paint this new colour onto your portrait. Whenever you feel that the temperature is supposed to change, you can just mix new tints like this, or if you have the tints already available in your palette, you can pick and use them as well. With the palette and the test portrait and also your existing portrait now available for you to pick colours from, it's very easy to fill in the colours as you see fit. Then you can drop in the highlight for the nose section and make sure that the shape of this highlight is following the direction and the flow of the highlight. You can stop once you have a semblance of a portrait like this. Once you can tell it's a portrait already, you can just take a step back and evaluate and see how you want to proceed. So right now, all we need to do are detailing and finishing touches. So let's start with the detailing first. So we'll start with the ear first. I'm just picking colours from the same area, which is the ear, and dropping them back in. Painting using hard edge, so there is no blending here or smudging. We are just using the same brush to paint all the colours back in. So it's relatively easy because all you have to do is pick the colours that are already available to keep detailing. Same goes for the eyes. So everything here is quite blurry because we worked quite large previously before and quite loosely. So now we're just tightening all the details and sharpening everything up. All the lines, the tiny wrinkles and the tiny highlights, we can put them in now. But I'm not putting in a lot of details at this moment. I just want to suggest the form and the modelling itself. So what I'm concerned with at the moment is if I can retain the expression and the emotion of the portrait itself. So I especially want to retain the wrinkles itself on the forehead. And if you take a look here at the nose or the portrait itself in general, I have replaced all the black shadows with red. So replacing shadows with a red vibrant colour is going to give your portrait a lot more luminosity and make it appear more, I don't know how to put it, um, glowy. And you can see here I'm not using the smudge tool, I'm just picking colours and painting them over and over again to gradually move the modelling. So this is a method you can use traditionally as well. You can always just mix the exact colour on the palette and place them onto your canvas instead of smudging your paint on the canvas into a mess. When you're painting wrinkles on the lips or the face, don't immediately go too dark. So always just go one shade darker and then one shade darker. Because remember that for every wrinkle there, you will also apply a highlight. So the highlight will actually make the wrinkles look a lot darker than they are. And when you're painting the teeth, don't be deceived by the colour white because it shouldn't be white, it should be in shades of grey or red greys. The reason why it will be in red greys is because it's surrounded by the mouth. So the mouth actually bounces off the reds onto the teeth itself, especially in the shadows. But the moment you put in the highlights into the teeth, it will look a lot more reasonable and it will look like white. The shadows for all the wrinkles and the creases in the lips should be done first because once you are done putting in all the shadows for all the creases, you can then add on the highlight which will go over the shadows. You should gradually go lighter and lighter for the highlights as well, don't suddenly go too bright. And even if you want to paint white highlights, remember to paint the pale pink first before painting white over it if you really really need to. And be very careful with the direction and the flow of the wrinkles. So here I'm using the liquify tool to push them a bit because they were painted in a wrong curvature. You should always shade the skin of the eye first before putting in the lashes and the brow. And also don't mistake the wrinkles at the brow with the eyebrows hair. They are completely different things. So right now I'm just painting the skin beneath the eyebrows. This is especially important if your character has an expression like mine. Then after you are done with the skin, you can slowly block in all the lashes. And for the lower lashes, remember that there are two lash lines, one for the tear duct and one for the lashes to sit on. When you're painting wrinkles for a young model, make sure that you are painting the highlights first, then only adding in the shadows for the wrinkles. Because if you add a too dark shadow, the character will look aged and old instead of having an expression. 
and I always prefer to add highlights instead of shadows when it comes to wrinkles. Now take a look at the shapes in my forehead for the values. You can see that my value shapes is different from the photo reference so we're gonna have to match them. So we're gonna have to clean up all the light and shadow shapes in our face. So as usual work in big shapes first and then only establish the smaller shapes within those big shapes. You should also soften all the hard edges and add more transitional tones at the terminator area. Be careful with your brush strokes directions, they should be pointing in a direction that is pleasant. Then the last thing to do is to block in the hair um, waves and the curls and make them frame the face a little bit better. Now the portrait is done. For finishing, you can choose to have abstract strokes. Abstract strokes. <laughs> abstract strokes. Help me! Abstract strokes. Abstract strokes. Abstract. Strokes. Abstract strokes. Abstract. 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 Ah! Now the portrait is done, all we have to do is put in the finishing touches. So for finishing touches, you can choose to have abstract strokes and you can also choose to detail certain features of the face in order to highlight certain emotion or certain part of the face that you think you want to highlight. Now it's time for me to show you my new brushes. So I'm using Hair Waves, it creates a loose wave for the hair and I'm going to use this to paint all her curls. This brush is so gorgeous, it's like vavavum, ooh la la, it's like so pretty, I love it so much. Because I feel like the older hair brush is a bit too uniform, but that one is still good for like more neat hair. But for like loose curls like this, I think this brush is just perfect. Now we're going to add in some freckles using the freckles texture brush from my new brush pack. And then it's better if we do this on a new layer so that we can erase away any freckles that we don't want. And be careful not to press too hard or else the color will come out really really dark. So experiment with some colors first and see how it turns out. Then we're also going to go to the cross hatching brush and use this to add a bit of a stylish marks in certain places. Then we are going to use the hair fine, which is actually the same hair brush from the old brush pack and block in the eyebrow hairs. I'm also switching to the hair waves brush to continue blocking in the eyebrow hairs in order to give a more natural look. Then I switch to the hair round brush in order to do the lashes. For the lower lashes, it's easier if you paint them in pairs of two or threes. So if you are painting in twos, they, are, they should be in an upside down V shape. But if they are in triplets, then you should paint them in a upside down W shape. You can also use the same brush to add more hairs to the eyebrows here, especially hairs that's not going in the same general direction. Because I've exaggerated the arc of the eyebrows a little bit to give her a more raised eyebrow look, I'm using the liquify tool to push and soften the look a little bit so that it's not that arch and round it up and also to make the eyebrows look thicker. There's no shame in using the liquify tool, it's there for a reason. Now let's try, now let's try, now let's try the abstract strokes. Abstract strokes. The abstract strokes, oh my god! The abstract strokes, oh my god, I cannot! <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I'm not okay. Now let's try the abstract strokes. Look at your face in terms of shapes instead of features. So don't see eyes, nose and lips but instead see like triangles, squares, trapezium. And using those shapes that you see from your observation, put in abstract strokes that can elevate. <laughs> Lastly, I'm going to add some abstract shapes and brush strokes here. So I'm just going to blend and smudge out from the skin outwards towards the background strokes as well so that it gives her more of a dramatic look. When you are in this step, there is no telling like when you are done for sure. Like you can stop at any time. So you have to decide at a point in time when you should stop. If you continue working on your painting, you can go overboard and overwork your painting. Then it can be a bit too much. So learn to stop before your painting looks too tight and detaily. So it needs to be a bit more loose. 
Okay guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys are looking forward to the portrait brush pad that I'll be launching next week. I hope to include more projects and tutorials in the premium brush pad version for people who are willing to pay a little bit more so that I can sustain this channel of mine. But anyway, don't forget to comment, like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye!